Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. We had a new patient inquiry the other day and it ended with, I hope you will still consider me as a potential patient because I have done a course of anabolic steroids. Uh, yeah, of course. Anabolic steroids are a well-recognized cause of functional hypogonadism. Why would we not consider you as a potential patient? That's likely the reason why you've got low testosterone. The men's health clinic is a no judgment zone. Hell, I've done all sorts. If I ever wrote my memoirs, I'd have to retire, leave the country and have plastic surgery. <laughs> oh, I could tell you some stories. Oh my word. That's lucky I'm sat here to be fair. Um, yeah, listen. It's a no judgment zone. You can have banged in gear. You could have had a little bit. You could have done all sorts. I don't care. However, what you do from now is what's important. Because we've all made mistakes. Some people have eaten themselves into diabetes. Now that takes effort. Doing a cycle of anabolic steroids to hopefully improve your body image improve your strength, perhaps cheat, naughty, naughty. You know, it's not like you're jacking up heroin, is it? And again, if you're jacking up heroin, you get more sympathy and support from the NHS than you do if you've done a cycle of anabolic steroids to hopefully improve your body. Now, disappointingly, obviously, Anabolic steroids dysregulate your physiology. That's why you're sat listening to this video. But you haven't gone into it with any malice or you haven't intentionally wanted to cause harm. You've just listened to the wrong people or you've just really taken the path of least resistance, which is because we still have those drives within our body. The autonomic nervous system, sympathetic, parasympathetic, anabolic, catabolic. You can't escape your physiology. I think it's, that's one of the things that really disturbs me is that we don't live according to our physiology. And we really can't live according to our physiology. We are physical beings in a world of psychological stress. Your body does not recognize the difference between physical and psychological stress. It releases the same hormones. It releases the same neurotransmitters. Catabolism. If you are overly cat catabolic, you will not have the capacity or reserve to be anabolic. Burn the candle at both ends. No, don't do that. Because if you train hard, you need to rest well. So we get a lot of guys come to the clinic who say they've done nothing wrong. They haven't banged in gear. They haven't been tooting coke. They haven't been drinking to oblivion for the last 10 years. They haven't been jacking up heroin. They haven't been eating themselves into oblivion and to diabetes. They've led a clean life but they're still sat in front of me with low testosterone. It's because there is no balance within this world. There is within the animal kingdom. They're getting on with it. They're too busy living according to their physiology. They're too busy surviving. Anytime you see animals who are obese, outside of hibernation, obviously, is when we get involved. Stick them into a zoo, they get fat. Stick them into a zoo, they get depressed. We are the cause of so much harm within this society and world. It is horrendous. But we can rectify that with an understanding of physiology. We know that male androgens follow a diurnal pattern. Why? Because you're supposed to do the same thing every day. Your body does not care if it's Monday and you need to go to work or it's Saturday 
and you're going to go training or it's Sunday and you're going to Netflix and chill. It wants you to do the same things. It's producing the same hormones, hopefully in the same amount, but obviously it won't do if your behaviours are dictating your physiology. So what should you do? When anabolic processes predominate at night time, they are repairing from the day to prepare for the next day. You have that spike of testosterone in the morning along with cortisol to go do what? Be active. That's what you should do. But most people wake up, have a scratch, then they, they have a pee, then they go, they go to the fridge, have their breakfast, which starts their metabolism, actually puts them into parasympathetic, and then they drive to work, have a stressful psychological day where they're releasing the same catabolic hormones that are used for activity. They drive home, they might have a gin, a whiskey, hopefully a bit of Netflix and chill, go to sleep. They don't sleep properly because they've got all these catabolic hormones flying around their body. They wake up tired, unrefreshed, they need caffeine, and the cycle continues. And they slowly, slowly wear themselves down to breaking point. But they've done nothing wrong. So you now understand that they have done something wrong. And what do you need to do to fix it? Well, you need to redress your lifestyle, your diet and your training. Reduce stress. Reduce stress in a world that is full of psychological stress. It's challenging, isn't it? But you need to do your best. You need to look at your sleep hygiene. You need to eat real food. Stop polluting your liver. Because your liver produces SHBG and albumin, which are necessary proteins that grab hold of testosterone for a function. They're not taking it away from you. There's actually an important function. You need to train. You need to use those catabolic hormones and neurotransmitters appropriately. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Doesn't matter what day it is, go do something. So when it comes to low testosterone, you may well have done something wrong. You may well have not done anything wrong. I don't care. Literally, from this day forth, it's up to you what you do, how you do it. I will guide you. I will support you. If you make bad choices and you're a naughty boy, I'll throw you off. We don't need people who are going to use and abuse. We don't need people who are not going to be compliant. Because there's a reason we do what we do. And there's a reason we, we do it the way that we do it. Because we know, hopefully, what's best for you. It isn't a matter of being paternalistic like the NHS. And you walk into the GP and say, what can you do for me? No. You need to be autonomous, but you need the support because in essence, it's your journey. What have you got to do? Earn your reward.